that and we want to do that. If you connect with God's agenda, he gives you true wealth. It's not necessarily that you build more houses, but you will enjoy what you have better. Your life will be more meaningful. Your life will be more purposeful. So as we start well, get your agenda right. If you read Ezra, because Ezra and Haggai, you have to always read them together. Ezra, Haggai, Nehemiah, because it's all con connected. Ezra 3, verse 67. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. <laughs> Oh, God. They also gave money to the masons and the carpenters and food and drink and oil to the people of Sidon and tired to bring cedar logs from Lebanon to the sea to Joppa according to the permission which they had from King Cyrus. So, remember when Cyrus freed them, he said, wherever you go, whatever you ask for, it will be given to you. And they went to Lebanon. And they said, Cyrus says we should go and build a temple. Give us cedar. And they gave them cedar. Give us gold. They got gold. Then they went to, to, their, to Judah. And everybody started sharing the cedar. They were sharing the cedar to build panel houses. And God says, if you connect to my agenda, your effort will be meaningful. Blessing is not always in quantity or volume. Blessing is always in, is in meaningfulness and significance. Meaningfulness. Living a meaningful life in a significant life and you can live a meaningful life with little and you can live a significant life with little you don't need to have everything to be happy because the people who have everything they are not all happy some of the people who have everything are very miserable so things are good, but things are not everything. So when we say God will bless you, it doesn't mean you have plenty, 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 plenty. Double, double. Everything now, double, 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 double. And I think in a sense, we pastors too, we have to take the blame because we have spoiled people. We have spoiled people. People who have no heart for God. And they would attend a prayer meeting and convert the prayer meeting to life enrichment <laughs> prayer meeting. Everything. Have you noticed when there is a prayer meeting and we say, let's pray for the nations? Nobody prays. Let's pray for Israel and Gaza that there will be peace. What's Israel and Gaza? <laughs> Let's pray for peace in Boku. Let's claim a double portion. Yeah, everybody's marching up and down. In that sense, we are like Judah. We are like these people of the Bible. And as we 
begin right this year. May our hearts be right. Our prayer must not always be centered on our needs. We must not be the beneficiaries of our own prayer. It is not for nothing that if you read the Bible, you, you'd scarcely read, pray for yourself in the New Testament. But you read, pray for one another. We are not the beneficiaries of our prayer. If every prayer we pray is centered on us, Lord, I need a breakthrough. Lord, I need open doors. Lord, kill my enemy. Lord, scatter the enemy. So, Lord, we pray that you scatter them by fire. You think if God says, I have fire, I have fire, what do you want me to do with the fire? You say, Father, scatter that man with this fire. But that same fire could burn the works of wickedness in the world. That same fire could bring refinement. That same fire could break the strongholds of evil and demonic powers, blinding the eyes of people that they cannot hear the gospel. But you want that fire to scatter somebody. And these days, the kinds of prayer people pray. I, I, I have... I have no basis. I, I can't find it. That's where, where the prayers come. Father, you scatter them by fire. What does that mean? The one who is disturbing my promotion. May the Lord visit him by fire. I don't know about you. You know, I, I am an artist. That's my natural instinct. So I, I always try to create graphical pictures in my head to understand something. I need to picture it. So when, when somebody prays like that, I'm just thinking, so how is that prayer going to be answered? The one who is disturbing my promotion may the Lord visit him by fire. So is it like he's sitting on the chair and God puts fire under the chair? Boom! I mean, what am I anticipating? The Lord should, should visit him by fire. What does that mean? You know, when, when you, you really align your heart to God, he fights your battles. If you are fighting your own battles, it is most likely your heart is not with God. You are left to fighting your own battles. But if your heart is aligned to him, this is what the, when the Lord says, you need not fight in this battle. Just stand aside. It is mine. When our hearts are right with God, there are certain prayers we don't pray for. He says, before you call, I hear. And while you are calling, he answers. God blesses you without praying. God blesses you without asking for it. But if you constantly, if you get up every day, listen to me, if you get up every day, and you have done prayer, and your done prayer is for a need of yours, your heart is not aligned with God. You are paneling your own house with the cedars of Lebanon. But if you get up in the morning and you're praying for India, and you're praying for Sri Lanka, for the gospel to have free course, in those nations, you pray for university campuses that God's word will begin to flow into the hearts of young people in university campuses. If you pray for the youth of Europe that they will come 
to a realization of God that the Holy Spirit will touch them and salvation will burst forth on youth campuses in Europe, in the United States. If you're praying for Russia, if you're praying for China, and you're praying for the Spirit of God to touch nations and raise new people to serve Him, if that's your heart, then you are building the house of the Lord. Haggai told them, watch from the day you align your heart with me and see the outcome. Because there is a before and after in your life. Before your heart is aligned and after your heart is aligned. Tonight, we're going to pray. And don't pray for any need of yours. And I will not pray for any need you have. You will not receive double portion. You will not receive double, double, double. You will not receive breakthrough. We are not praying for any of that. There may be a time for us to pray for that. But tonight, we are not praying for that. We want to build the house of God. And we are not talking about just physically building the house of God, but looking at God's agenda all over the world. What does God want to do in China? What does God want to do in Russia? I mean, if you go to Europe now, almost every young person in Europe is an atheist. They've grown up, they've never heard about God, they've never heard of Jesus. Just a few years ago, almost all of them were Christians. No matter in towns and villages we pray Lord for the raising of a standard of the Holy Spirit against wickedness against unbelief against disorder in the name of Jesus let your spirit lift up a standard in every nation against every onslaught of wickedness every onslaught of lies every onslaught of deception in the name of Jesus fill the land Fill the nation, fill the land, fill the continent from the North Pole to the South Pole. Pray, 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 pray. Lord, cover the earth with your glory.